Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you how Cognito service uh, of AWS works. So it basically has two main things, uh, Cognito user pool and identity pool. So we will take a look at uh, what those are. We will try to configure each of them in AWS account and then we will have a small Java code uh, that runs that will get you tokens from that user pool and uh, we will exchange those user uh, user pool tokens with the identity pool tokens to get uh, the AWS uh, temporary credential. So uh, let's go ahead and see uh, what the Cognito user pool and identity pool are. So again, uh, like you see on the screen, I had uh, written a blog post on the difference between Cognito user pool and identity pool uh, quite some time back. So if you do get some time, uh, do take a look at this blog post. But if you go and go to the AWS service uh, Amazon Cognito so log into your uh, um, AWS console uh, go to Cognito service and you can see this home page now uh, this is what it says right Amazon Cognito offers user pools and identity pools user pools are user directories that provide sign up and sign in options for your app users so essentially user pool is your user management system so it stores all your user data all the attributes that are required for the user the authentication for the user so on and so forth so it's a complete user management system that AWS provides for you now it also has identity pools so let's see what it, that is so it says identity pools provide AWS credentials to ga grant user access to other AWS services so this is a, a entity or a pool uh, in which the identities uh, have access to AWS credentials uh, or rather temporary AWS credentials that uh, can be used to access some of the AWS services and we will kind of see how uh, those temporary credentials are generated and sent back to the client so that it can be used to access AWS services but essentially that's what uh, the identity pool is for and again uh, identity pool uh, can have multiple providers so you can have an identity provider like Facebook or Amazon or Google and once you get tokens from those services you can exchange it to with the identity pool to get uh, temporary AWS credentials or you can directly use uh, the user pool token to exchange uh, with the identity pool to get uh, you know the temporary AWS credentials. so if you go back to the blog and scroll a little down uh, you can see that uh, for Cognito Identity Pool, which is also called Federated Identities, uh, there are multiple authentication providers that are possible. So you can use a Cognito User Pool as an authentication provider or you can use any of the social identity providers like Google+, Facebook or Twitter. And once you get the token from Cognito User Pool or any of the social providers, you can exchange that with uh, the Identity Pool to get temporary tokens from the identity pool and use it to access AWS resources. So let's go ahead and try to configure each of these and see how they work. So uh, how do you go to Cognito service? Go to services. Uh, you can search for Cognito here and you can see uh, there's a Cognito service. So just click on it and you will land on the same page. Again, uh, this is a region specific service. So make sure uh, you select uh, the appropriate region. So for now, I have selected US East, which is North Virginia. Uh, but you can select any of the available regions which has Cognito service and you can see that some of the regions like US West, uh, EU which is Paris does not have this services so choose accordingly. So let's start by creating a user pool so to create a user pool click on manage user pool and once you do that you will get an option to create a user pool so it says you do not have any user pool click here to create a user pool so let's go ahead and do that uh, now it requires a pool name so let's just call it my user pool and uh, I'm not going to step through settings we will just review defaults and uh, you can see uh, it says the required attribute is email uh, you can also see that uh, you can choose uh, other attributes that uh, your user might have and uh, you, you can also define a customized password policy but by default uh, the password uh, length should be 8 it should have uppercase, lowercase, special characters and numbers and users can sign themselves up again we do not have an MFA MFA is basically multi-factor authentication so if you have something like uh, a Google Authenticator or something that you want to use for MFA you can uh, turn that on as well so we would need app client because app client is something that is used to configure client to connect to Cognito so we would need to do that but we will do that once our user pool is created so uh, this all of these uh, defaults are good enough for now so let's go ahead and click on create pool 
and it should create a user pool for us okay so there we go you ha it has been created you can see uh, this is the pool ID again we are going to use this pool ID when we are configuring client but for now uh, you know it says what is the pool ID what is the uh, ARN and all the stuff that we saw in the default now uh, like I said we need to configure app client to configure user pool so let's go ahead and do that so you can go to app clients which is in the general settings and you can see it does not have any app client right now so to add an app client just click on add an app client now it will require a client name so I'm just gonna say my client uh, as the name uh, refresh token expiration so whenever a uh, entity gets authenticated with user pool uh, it gets three things uh, one is the refresh token one is the auth token and uh, one is the id token so the refresh token that is used to renew the auth token gets expired in 30 days so that's what this, that is uh, for our demo i'm going to use enable sign in uh, api for server based authentication uh, which basically uses aws credentials but if you are using a client side web app then you might need a custom, uh, not custom auth, but user password auth, right? So you can let user directly sign a, sign up and uh, use their credentials to sign in and so on and so forth. But uh, for my demo, I'm just going to use a server side authentication, which is why I'm going to use that. I'm not going to select uh, a client secret, but if you do select that, uh, it will generate a client secret and every client that uh, needs to connect to user pool needs to provide that client secret. But uh, for simplicity sake, uh, we'll just skip that from now and click on create app client. Okay, so now it has created a client with a client ID and that is good. So uh, we can definitely go ahead and start using this pool uh, from the, like we can connect from the client and see it works. The only thing that is left now is creating the actual users. So let's go ahead and do that. So go to users and groups and you can see right now that there are no users uh, created in this pool. So to create a new user, click on create user button and in the user you can add your uh, user. Let me call it Ethakur. And, uh, and so we do not want any invitation to be sent. Admin at the rate one, two, three, and we will use a capital and let's not add phone number and let's add uh, the email address which is open source for geeks at the rate gmail.com and we will all, uh, mark the email as verified so let's click on create user and you can see that this or the user is created now but the account status is forced change password so you can refresh this and it is still that so you need to uh, go ahead and change this programmatically and i will show that how you can get that done so let's get back to our java code and for now i'm just going to show you how to get token from uh, the user pool so let's uh, not even talk about the identity pool which we haven't configured yet so uh, these are the AWS credentials that we are going to use to uh, do an admin auth uh, and get the token so this is something that is required and like I always say you should never uh, hard code this uh, into your uh, applications or check it into your github repository so this is uh, clearly a no-go and again this is just for testing purpose i'm going to delete these credentials uh, when this video demo is over so uh, the next thing that we do is we are going to add username password and we are going to do an admin uh, no srp auth and uh, if we do get a challenge and uh, like we said here uh, when the authentication ha uh, happens it will it is going to print or give us force change password uh, challenge if that happens then it will actually go ahead and call a reset password a api or a function which is going to add uh, the new password that we are going to define so uh, let's go ahead and uh, start populating this value so to do get this done we need uh, these three things so let's go ahead and start doing that so first we need client id so let's go to aws uh, cognito service let's go to uh, app client setting and uh, all right, so not here. It was under app clients, and just copy this, which is the app client ID. So just paste it here. Then you need user pool ID to get user pool ID. Go to general settings, and you can see this is the user pool ID. So just copy it here. Uh, then you need username. So we know the username is was Ethakur. Uh, the user password was admin at the rate one two three, 
and uh, let's say the new password is one two three four five okay so this is what is going to happen the password is going to be changed to new password and I'm hoping somewhere well, there we go so we are printing uh, the challenge name that is thrown back to us so which will be uh, this which is if you go to users it will be this four sec change password so let's go ahead and run this all right so we have everything in place so let's go ahead and run this uh, just do a run as and our application okay so you can see that uh, the new password required uh, challenge was thrown and the password was reset successfully now we did not get ID token because we are just returning an empty string in in case of the case where we have to actually the reset reset the password but uh, if we do not so once it is reset the next time it is going to do an authentication and return the ID token so if you go to AWS service and refresh now uh, it is going to say account status has confirmed so let's go ahead and uh, run this one more time now what is going to happen is this time it is not going to throw us any challenge and uh, we are going to see that uh, it is going to return an ID token it failed and the reason is that uh, we did not change the user password to the new user password that we had set so let's go ahead and change our user password to the new password that we had set and there we go you can see that uh, it did not return any challenge this time and it returned ID token successfully so now that we have ID token uh, from the, uh, the user pool let's go ahead and try to exchange this for the identity pool so to do that go to federated entities which is nothing but the identity pool and now we need to con create a new pool uh, that uh, uses the user pool that we have created as a provider so uh, let me go ahead and put uh, the name as my identity pool and uh, we do not want access to unauthenticated entities but if you do want that to happen you can add it here uh, since we are going to give providers as uh, the user pool we do not want uh, this to happen so let's go to authentication provider and uh, we will use Cognito as authentication provider so uh, let's go to Cognito again and we would need to populate these details which is user pool ID and app client ID actually we can we already did it here so let's go ahead and copy this and paste it here so uh, app client ID is this and user pool ID is this so let's go ahead and paste it here and let's click on create pool so it is going to create two roles for you uh, one is for authenticated uh, entries and other is for unauthenticated entries but since we are not going to allow uh, unauthenticated tool uh, that particular role does not matter to us what we really care about is the authenticated rule so uh, this is the summary let's go ahead and click on allow so it is going to create those roles for you and you can go to IAM policy and use that so you can see uh, this is the identity pool ID uh, this is the region so let's go ahead and copy this identity ID and uh, paste it here so identity pool ID is this uh, then we know need a provider name so provider name uh, has this particular format and this is corresponds to the user pool uh, that uh, the initial token belongs to so the only thing that is going to change is the user pool ID which is nothing but this so let's just go ahead and copy this and replace it over here and we have everything here so let me actually go ahead and tell you what is happening here so once we get the ID token from the user pool we are going to uh, use that to exchange uh, the temporary AWS credentials that we get from identity pool so if you go to this method uh, you can see that it is going to first create a get ID request with the identity pool ID that we have created and it is then going to provide uh, provider tokens uh, to uh, this particular uh, uh, API call which is uh, get ID request and the provider name is something uh, that we already wrote about this corresponds to the user pool uh, that is get that was that was used to get the token and then you have the actually token that you got from the user pool now this is something that is required for authenticated entries okay if you are using unauthenticated entries uh, in Cognito uh, then you do not need this so once that is done uh, you can call an Amazon uh, Cognito identity dot get ID call and this will return a unique ID for the particular user so if the user already exists it will return the same ID if not it will create one and uh, return it 
back to you. So if you go back to identity browser, you can currently see that there are no identities associated with this identity pool. But the moment we do this and this call gets executed, uh, we are going to see uh, a new identity here. So uh, once that is done, uh, we are going to uh, get the credentials, which is temporary credentials using the ID uh, that we have. And again, we have to uh, give the provider tokens here, which is nothing but the uh, the user pool token that we got, uh, got earlier. So uh, let's go ahead and try to execute this. I'm just going to make sure I'm calling AWS credge from the main method, which is okay. So let's go ahead and try to run this and see what happens. Okay, save it and let's run. Okay, we got the ID token and there we go you can see it it got the get, uh, access key id the secret key and the social session token and now you can use this tokens to do further aws uh, or aws services that you need to access the only thing that you need to keep in mind is that uh, the possible services that it can access would depend on the im role that you have defined so if you go to iam and if you go to the roles uh, you should be able to see two roles created for so what was our uh, identity pool uh, we called it let's go to edit identity pool and yep my identity pool so if you go to here and search for my identity pool you can see that uh, there is an auth role and there's an unauth role so if you go and click this and go to uh, policies then uh, you can see these are the things that you can do but if you want to access any other service like S3 or any other service then you need to go ahead and add it here. So uh, the temporary credentials that are generated will give you access to the stuff or the services or the permissions that you have defined in this IAM policy. So one last thing now that we have executed uh, the code uh, we should be able to go to identity browser and see that the identity is now created. So if you go to identity browser, uh, you should be able to see uh, one entity there. So you can see that uh, the entity ID is created here. So you can click on that and uh, you can go to the actual entity ID. So you can see it has linked uh, login which corresponds to Cognito IDP, IDP which is uh, basically Cognito uh, user pool and uh, that's where this entity is associated from. So if you actually go ahead and uh, run this one more time or you can actually see it here as well uh, this is the identity ID associated with it and if you uh, just search it here uh, you can see this is the one so uh, it actually created a unique identity for you and this is what it is and if you actually go ahead and try to rerun this you are going to get the same ID right so for the first time it created an ID for you but this time it is going to reuse the same ID uh, that that is there so uh, there we go so this is the ID so let's go ahead and copy this and search it one more time and you can see it's still the same so uh, and if you go to identity browser uh, you would still see that uh, there is just one entry uh, that is out here so if you have a new user in cognito user pool then there will be another entry that is created corresponding to that particular user but for a single user in identity uh, or the user pool there will be one entity in the identity pool so i hope that made sense uh, so just to summarize what we have done is we first created a user pool uh, we used uh, the server side authentication that's why we had to give uh, the credentials of aws and uh, once we did that we gave username password and uh, the first time when we did it uh, it actually called reset password uh, that changed the password from admin at one two three four five uh, one two three to admin at the rate one two three four five and once that was done next time uh, we started getting uh, the id token and the next thing that we did is using that id id token we made a call to identity pool and we exchanged it for uh, the temporary AWS credentials uh, which we get in this credentials call and uh, that is something uh, that gets printed on the console as we have seen. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.